Now, once, you're, once you've got the back flat and the front sharp, you're pretty much ready to go though, and using these chisels is very simple. There's basically two operations you're gonna do with, with chisels, two categories of things. One is called paring, which is sort of a horizontal slicing motion, and the other is a chopping or mallet work, where you've got the chisel in a vertical position and you're chopping down into an opening and trying to square something. Paring is often used when you're just cleaning up the face of a joint that might be rough from saw marks. Now, holding the chisel, you're gonna to wanna to take your primary hand, if you're right-handed, that's your right hand, on the handle, and you're gonna hold, hold your chisel with that hand. Use your left hand to support and control the blade. It's also providing a level surface for the chisel to kind of guide it along the work. And here we're going across end grain, which is one of the most difficult grains to get across because all the little wood fibers are sticking up. But you can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking off little bits, little shavings at a time. And that's the goal with pairing. Don't go for big chunks. You really want to take little shavings off um, of your work. Now, one thing that happens to most beginners when you chisel is that you end up taking more wood off the back of the cut than at the front. And so just be aware of this. Check your work every now and then and see, oh, am I lower on the back? It's just because when you end up over here, you're pushing down harder. So that's horizontal pairing. There's also vertical pairing. And vertical pairing is pretty similar to the horizontal pairing, except you're just working in the vertical plane. So for instance, I've got these sample mortises we were testing out a jig for here. And um, one of the jobs you always have to do when you're using a router to cut mortises is square them out. You can see the rounded ends have to be squared like this one is. So that's a job for the chisel as well. So in a joint like this, we're gonna have to use the chisel to set some guidelines as well. A technique for doing that is to place, take, take a big chisel, one with a lot of surface area, place it on the inside wall of the mortise and just tip it up and it will carry that line of your mortise wall to the top of the wood. So basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to create an extension of the wall of my mortise past this curve so I, that I can have a place to, to cut into it. We'll also have to do the same um, on the back to create a straight edge along the back wall. And here I'm just using hand pressure. I don't need to use the mallet for this. I'm just going to create my lines. Now, why am I doing this? This is, a, I could have done this in pencil. One of the reasons is that now I can just drag my chisel across and it'll just drop right into that line that I've drawn. I don't really need to pay too much attention now that when I was, I've carefully placed that, but and now I can just begin my chopping. So for something like this with a mortise, you'll want to chop these out. There's no way you can pare down into this much wood by pushing. So you're going to want to use a mallet. Now this is a, there's two kinds of mallets you'll see in woodworking. This is called a carpenter's mallet. It's perfect for this kind of work. The other kind is, looks like a cylinder. It's called a, it's a carver's mallet. They're both do the same thing, just different styles. We'll use the carpenter's mallet for this. It's a little better. You need to pay attention to the beveled side versus the back side when you're doing this kind of work. The, be, the back side should always be facing the wood that you're keeping. In other words, or another way to look at it is the beveled side goes with the waste. So if I had placed the beveled side facing my good, the good wood here, I would have, it's going to cut into the wood. I won't be creating a straight line here. So let's start here. You can start by chopping the ends. Now one tip about this is you wanna, of course, make sure your chisel is straight up and down when you're doing this. And just give it a good firm tap to get it started. The fewer taps you do, the better in my opinion. If you do a lot of little taps like this, that's gonna be more chances for the, ch for the chisel to move around in between blows. So I've got my chisel almost all the way down to the surface of this mortise. I'm gonna just pry it out. And now I'll go to work on the sides. The sides are the same thing. I've got my little guideline there. I can just drop this into. chop that mortise out. Now I'll move to the other side and do the same. So with most of the wood removed, got my square roughed out. So 
So if you're a beginner woodworker, it might be a good idea just to get a starter set of these chisels. They're not too expensive. Um, and then you can practice sharpening on them and get used to how they work and save your money and buy a more expensive set later when you, when you, get, the, when you get better skilled. Thank you.